How's it going guys? Welcome back to Maker's Muse. So today's project was meant to be a quick, fun Easter print where I took the Stanford Bunny and made a low poly version and put some of this stuff in, which is a LED strip, which I had left over from my 3D printing system set. However, in true Maker's Muse fashion, everything that could go wrong went wrong. So let's go through what happened in this video. Welcome back guys. So as I said, I wanted to make a low poly version of the Stanford Bunny and put some LED light strips in it. Sounds pretty simple, but things didn't exactly go according to plan. So initially I started in Mesh Mixer and got the bunny file and then decided to decimate the triangles down by reducing them to make that low poly look. Quite easy to do and the result was actually quite pleasing. Although I did notice that some areas became quite thin and because you're actually reproducing this file in real life with 3D printing, you have to be careful that those thin areas won't be too fragile. So what I did is I used the grab tool in the sculpting menu to then just slightly pull those triangles out to add a bit more thickness. Next, I wanted to consider the fact that I wanted this to be hollow, but I needed some way of putting the LED strip in. And this was my first mistake. So when you want to make a hollow shape, for 3D printing, usually it's easier to just set zero infill in your slicing software. But by doing so, you can't have a hole, which means I wouldn't have been able to put this in. So I thought I'd be quite clever and do a hollow in Mesh Mixer, which worked fairly well, although there was a few settings I needed to tweak because the triangle count was either too high or too low for my liking. And then I wanted to Boolean difference, which was basically cutting away a slot for this LED strip. So for those who don't know, in Mesh Mixer, it has gotten much better, but Boolean differences and Boolean unions with low triangle count objects is never a really good idea. You want to give it more triangles to work with. So then what I did is I selected the area I wanted to do the Boolean difference and I added more triangles, which slowed the file down quite a lot because there was a lot more triangles and it did work, but it didn't look the best. I just used sort of a stretched ellipse shape. And then I had to simplify those triangles back to make the file more workable. After all this, I had my file that looked pretty good, but it was definitely a lot more effort than should have been involved. I should have just reduced it and then gone to my slicing software. But anyway, I then took it into Simplify 3D and realized my second mistake. In reducing the triangles for my file, I made the base no longer flat. It actually had these sharp triangles in it and it was no longer dead flat, which means it needed support material under the print. Now, normally I would have just gone straight back and started again and made sure it was flat, but I'd spent all that time hollowing it out that I decided to just proceed. So moving on, my initial idea was to use my spray painting hack, which I did a while ago, to add some neat color to my 3D print. So I got some filament, some clear PLA, and I sprayed it with orange and silver and regrettably a little bit of green. Now, anyone who's involved in art or knows anything about color, that was a terrible idea. I knew it was a terrible idea, I just kind of did it anyway. And what that resulted in was a horrible brown-ish color because the green overpowered everything else and green and orange just makes brown. Then, basically, I noticed I hadn't sprayed enough. I hadn't cut enough filament off to complete my print. So I had to change back over to clear PLA. And this was the result. So you can see at the bottom, that's the spray painted clear PLA. Also the file's so big that the striations that you would normally get that look quite nice when you do the spray painting hack don't really look that good. They're too, they're too fine because the print's too large. And you can see I started to run out there, so I had to put the clear PLA back in. Also, my temperature was too high. I had it set at 215 degrees C, which works well for other brands of PLA, but was too high for this no-name Chinese clear PLA I was using. Anyway, at the end of the print, it was a little bit stringy. I cleared off supports. It did work pretty well, but mm, pretty, pretty ugly print. So I decided to print it again with just clear, but this took like six or eight hours or more actually. I didn't want to wait that long because I wanted to get this up by Sunday, so I did a smaller print. And this is the smaller print. Actually turned out really nice. I reduced the temperature down to 200, which made a big difference. And also I sunk the print down a tiny bit into the bed using Simplify 3D. And what this meant is the base was much flatter. 
because it cut away a lot of that support that was from the jagged triangles again which I should have not had in the first place anyway but it actually worked pretty well it printed quite nicely and there was no wisps like there was in the other print so happy with my new little print I decided to add in the LED strips and I've lost count of how many mistakes I've made but because I shrunk it down the slot was too small bugger that's okay though so I got my soldering iron and I decided to just basically it's PLA heat it up and just melt the slot out bigger which actually worked really well and it comes back to the fact that if I was going to do that I should have just hollowed it out in Simplify 3D instead of Mesh Mixer. Once that was done I soldered on a connector which is just a little barrel DC jack and shoved in the, the LED strips and after all of those mistakes and all of that setup this is the final product and it looks great it turned out really well I'm actually really happy with it so I'll plug it in and that's how it looks it actually looks really cool the LED strips are kind of just jumbled up inside but it has a really nice clear look to it this is a nice clear PLA it doesn't have any of that sort of yellowish tinge some other PLA does and I'm really happy with it the final result after all that heartache was actually pretty good so things I would improve for next time Firstly, I would make sure the base of my file is flat before exporting my STL file for printing because that makes 3D printing it a lot easier. Secondly, I wouldn't bother hollowing it out in Mesh Mixer. Instead, I would print it with zero infill in Simplify 3D or another slicing program and then simply use a soldering iron to melt a slot into the bottom. Much simpler and probably will end up with a much thinner skin which transmits the light through easier. Thirdly, although the filament spray painting hack is a lot of fun it's not really suitable for a file that's this large because you'd have to take a lot of filament off the roll and then you have to spray paint it and you have to calculate how much you need so it's a nice idea and yet it worked fine no block nozzles I know a lot of you were a bit scared of block nozzles using this hack but that didn't happen but the end result really wasn't that great clear it certainly looks a bit better and finally something I'm not too happy with is the the look of the DC jack hanging at the back it kind of looks a bit rubbish so for the third version of the bunny, I'm thinking that I might make it battery powered. So to do that, I would have to put a battery compartment inside the file and have some way of you know, changing those, but it would also make it look a lot nicer and cleaner that that cable hanging out the bottom. So I think I'm gonna do that in a future project. So thanks very much guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video of me trying to make a simple print and failing miserably. The end result is okay, but it took a lot of work to get there. If you want to see future 3D printing videos on Makers Muse, don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy Easter, guys. Bye.